assalamu alaikum friends welcome uh, to this series of uh, videos in which we are uh, discussing the trust services framework for information system reliability and in the previous videos we discussed the security confidentiality and privacy three uh, important constituents and in the this video we are going to study the processing integrity which is the fourth constituent of the trust services framework for systems reliability so when we say processing integrity, it means that whatever data is processed, uh, it is processed in an accurate manner, in a timely manner. It reflects the results of only the authorized transactions, not the fake ones. And it includes outcomes of all activities engaged in by the organization, not leaving any transaction as such uh, in a given period of time. So there are three aspects to this. It requires the control of the input as well as the processing as well as the output. So in a way, it it uh, it encapsulates it captures all the three modes of uh, 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 the data processing. This which is the inputting, the processing, and the output. So if we divide it in a more detailed fashion, we can say there are five different uh, types of controls which need to be implemented to make sure the processing integrity of the information systems to make sure towards the end their systems reliability. So the one is the source data controls, the data entry controls, processing controls, transmission controls, and output controls, and we shall discuss them in a few videos uh, uh, from this video onward. So the source data controls means whatever data we are capturing, which will form the input into the system. Uh, so we need to make sure that data captured before being entered into the system is the correct data, it's the valid data. It's the reliable data. So it is something before the entering data into the system. So some of the controls are the form design. So if we are, if we are, we are collecting some data which has to be uh, uh, entered in the system. So it's better to collect those data in a form, in a uh, pre pre predetermined pre designed form sort of thing, so that there is no information omitted. There is there are no or incomplete information. So for example, if uh, I ask my cashier to record uh, whenever he pays out some cash to some vendors or some expenses, uh, I ask him to record on a piece of paper. So maybe if just I ask him to record on a blank piece of paper, maybe he records, sometimes he records the NIC number of the pay, sometimes he forgets. Sometimes he records the date, sometimes he forgets. Sometimes he records the uh, vendor to whom uh, the uh, payment is being, sometimes you just record the person to whom the uh, payment is being made. So if I, I design a form in which all the necessary pieces of information are labeled, then the chances of uh, inconsistencies, the chances of omission will be minimized. And the form should be pre-numbered and in a sequence so that if uh, there is a duplicate number or there is a, a missing number uh, that can easily be traced and uh, in a way uh, the frauds or misusing of any any information can be a relatively easy to press. And then there's a, a, a concept of uh, an automated turnaround document. So these are the documents which are originated by our system. <clears throat> so basically they are the output of our system, but eventually they become the input of the system as well. So for example, if I give invoice to my customer, usually good companies have a uh, detachable part within the invoice which contains some barcode type of thing so whenever the customer uh, remit the payment uh, the detachable part of the invoice is uh, 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 sent back to the sent back to us to our finance department so that whenever we record the payment from the customer we don't need to enter the details of the customer that okay this is the customer number who is paying and this is the invoice number against which the payment is made Rather, we just uh, scan the barcode and the system automatically captures all the data because this is our own barcode and we have already uh, uh, already mapped the data of customer and know invoice in that barcode type of thing. So these are known as a turnaround documents. Uh, we usually see the uh, K electric bills and the SSCC bills in this format. So when we pay the bills to the bank, the bank just scans the bill and then uh, the, all the data of the consumer number and amount is automatically captured. So Remember, these are the output of our system, but that eventually they become the input for our system. So that's why we say this is the part of the source document for us. Then there's a concept of, for the control purpose, there's a concept of canceling and storing of documents. By canceling, we don't mean destroying the document. 
we mean that if a document has been acted upon, it, there should be some evidence placed on the face of the document if it is a physical document that it has already been acted upon. So that if I pay an invoice, then there should be invoice should be stamped like it is paid. If I enter the document, there should be a stamp light. It is entered so that uh, the information is not entered again. Uh, and this uh, cancellation can also be done uh, uh, as a flag uh, in electronic documents. Uh, and of course, for all the source documents, uh, or we need to make that the authorization and segregation of duties are in place. So if it, uh, the uh, source document are our documents, we need to make sure that the right person has uh, executed this document and there are signatures or other controls uh, which are uh, confirming the authorization of the execution of the document. So for example, if I receive an invoice, uh, um, uh, a sale invoice, which is our document, uh, which will eventually become an input document, uh, I need to see that the invoice contains maybe signs or uh, some other controls if it is electronic document which confirms that this is rather issued by the right person within the organization uh, and segregation of duties we already have discussed that three duties need to be segregated especially in the cases of assets that custody of the asset the authorization of the movement of the asset and the recording uh, of the asset in the accounting record so that uh, the, the, this, this actually enhances the controls and minimizes the chances of fraud and mistakes so visual scanning means if a document has come to me, I should not just start entering the document into the system. First, I should visually scan the document to see any apparent inconsistency. So sometimes this visual scanning does this tremendous amount of controls, uh, which sometimes the information systems themselves uh, cannot do. Uh, so this is also important. I remember uh, when I was in an industry uh, working for a company in a finance department. So uh, the customer, the, the vendor, the supplier used to invoice the company for the iron that we purchased, that we placed the order, and that is just delivered maybe yesterday. We received an invoice, and the prices on the invoice were as uh, set up by, uh, in, as, as agreed in the purchase order, including, say, 18% sales tax, uh, and the purchase order was signed two months back. And by the time the goods were delivered, the sales tax rate was reduced to, say, 8% or something like this. And the invoice contains the 18% sales tax, which was correct as per the purchase order document, but not correct as per the recent uh, recent uh, legislation, uh, recent uh, updated law. So our director finance, just because of the visual scanning, because the system cannot check this, system just check the price from the purchase order, from and the purchase order already contains 18% sales tax, for example. So this is the knowledge of the business, knowledge of the general economic conditions, and then the visual scanning actually, our director finance just, uh, <coughs> didn't sign this uh, voucher. He, he bounced back the invoice to the procurement department asking for reduction in price based on the new CS6 rate. And it caused millions of rupees difference because there was a project going on and tons of steel was actually being purchased, iron was being purchased and lakhs of thousands of rupees, millions of rupees difference uh, in the payment. So visual scanning also works. Document should be, okay. Check digit verification, again, this is something very technical. Uh, the check digit is there in our CNIC number. It is already the, always there in the bank account numbers. So that whenever some sort of account number or an ID number is entered in the system manually, the last digit usually is a check digit, which is actually worked out by the other digits. So say if there is a 10 digit code for something, the nine digits are the C digits based on the coding system. Whereas the last digit is a result of a calculation algorithm of the nine digits. So we can say that, for example, the last digit is sum of all the nine digits divided by 11. And then whatever residual comes in, that is the 10th digit. So what is the benefit of this kind of coding? Uh, the benefit is that, that if any of the number is mistakenly typed in the system, the number will not exist and the system will automatically invalidate that number. The system will automatically catch that this number does not exist. So otherwise, uh, if we just code the, the according to the coding system, uh, account number one would exist, account number two will exist, account num or ID number three will exist. But So IDs will exist in a series. But if we put a check digit, the series will be uh, somehow controlled by the nine digits and the tenth digit will be based on the confirmation of the nine digits and it will be always be different digit. So this, also, this is also a great control. <clears throat>
and of course apart from bar code we can put the rfid uh, chips uh, which is which is a more sophisticated control because the bar codes uh, need uh, uh, the scanning uh, in a very right angle in a very direct right direction whereas an rfid scanning is possible even uh, if the uh, uh, item or rfid chip uh, is play, is is stick uh, stick on 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 some material on some object it can be farther we don't need cameras we don't need a scanner to be in front of the rfid chip so it can just sense that that particular uh, commodity exists within the uh, uh, rfid frequency identifier so these were the source data controls and in the next video we shall see the data entry controls thank you